Our gospel lesson today comes from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Listen for God's word that is for us in this day. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go. Search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, They were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The wise men following the star reminds me of the Israelites following that pillar of cloud by day and that pillar of fire by night through the wilderness to the promised land. And it inspires that hopeful idea that if if you look for God, if you look up, God will guide you in a visible, tangible way that is, that with a big sign that is right there for you to see, and you can't miss it. Anyone ever wish for a big, bright, bold sign in the sky that you could not miss? Oh, that would be great. I do believe if you look for God, God will guide you, and you will find God. Later in chapter 7, Matthew says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. You might be one of those people that gets a big, bright, unmissable sign in the sky. It is possible. Or you could be given smaller signs. Signs that appear in everyday life and nudge you one way or the other or point on this road that God is calling you to. It could be a conversation with a friend or a story in scripture that you find yourself living, or a word, a simple word that prompts you to turn to God again and again, and finding that God is right in the midst of your life every single day. That idea of a small word pointing you back to God again and again is why I so love the practice of epiphany words. It's such a small thing. A card with a word that 
is meant to be a tool to help you seek and find God in the midst of your year, in the midst of your days. Many churches do this. Some call them star words because somehow they get them all cut out in the shape of a star. (laughs) But that kind of eluded me. So we have cards that are like business card size that fit in your wallet. It's very convenient. They have a little star on them. But it's the same idea. It's to say, what if just this word could help us walk and meditate and seek God through the year? Maybe God could use even that to guide us. So last year on this Sunday, Troy and I, with Riley, who was much, much smaller, made it to my parents' house for lunch. That was a great accomplishment. I remember feeling like I might be starting to get the hang of this whole having an infant thing. Might have been a bushful thinking, it might have just been a good day, but we got there and it was good. I also remember that my mom had picked up epiphany words for us and she says she didn't look at them and she placed them upside down on the table for us to choose. So I chose first and I turned my word over and it said, balance. It was so perfect, it felt rigged. (laughs) But I don't think it was. Balance was very clearly the challenge ahead of me in the year, but now it was also the epiphany word. In your bulletin, you have this sheet that gives you some ideas of how to work with your epiphany word, and one of the first things it suggests is to look to scripture. As you look up balance in scripture, there's not a lot of direct references. There's a few. There's Ephesians 5.15 that alludes to it as you think about walking. It says, therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise. So we talk about the wise men, that seems great. Let's do that. Then there's Luke 2, 52. And Jesus kept increasing in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. In that verse, in that passage, Luke shows us how Jesus is such a wonderful example of balance, growing both within and without with God and with other people. There's also Proverbs 11.1 that says, A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. It reminds me of those scales used by money changers, used to weigh things, and it's about things being right and fair and treating one another fairly. There aren't many direct references but I feel like balance is implied in so much of Scripture. Scripture tells us how God is perfectly gracious and perfectly just, how Jesus is fully divine and fully human, how we are told to honor our father and our mother, and how we're called to love the Lord our God with our heart and mind and soul, balancing our connection to God with all that is within us. And of course, we're told to love our neighbors as ourselves, balancing how we treat ourselves and others. So as I walked with this word of balance through the year, there's the obvious instant connection of how to balance being a mom and a pastor, And that was a great part of the intentionality of the year. But as the year went on, as soon as I felt like I had things in some kind of balance, God opened my eyes to more and more things that I needed to notice and carefully balance. It was amazing. I felt like, okay, I think I've got this mom and pastor thing down today. And then all of a sudden, God's like, yeah, you remember your wife too. I was like, oh, yeah. (laughs) That's a whole other thing to balance. Or a daughter or a friend. 
or in the midst of balancing all of these different relationships that shift in the midst of the big change, there's also to pray and to study, to sleep, and maybe someday to go out. <laughs> so there's all of these things to balance. And as soon as one seemed to make sense, another came out, and it was turning back and forth. And then in the midst of writing this about balance, there's the news this weekend that takes a turn, and I find myself faced with the fragile balance of power in this world. And I find myself wondering if my own perspective that is so strongly focused on my family and on this church, maybe it also needs to be rebalanced to look up and see more of the world from the grieving and protesting in the Middle East to those persistent fires in Australia, there is no end of things to balance. Balance has been a, a good word for me in this year because every time I, I try to figure out how to balance something, it continually reminded me to turn to God and to seek wisdom to find how God could help me balance this. So I tried to figure out how all of these good and meaningful, valuable things that God had put in my life could, could have attention and space within the time that there is. I don't have this all figured out yet. If anyone does, please come have a cup of coffee with me. But I know this is a word I will continue to journey with, just as some of the other words I've had in the past, like believe and celebrate. But in the midst of all of these epiphany words, whatever your word is, I think underneath it, the question is right there with what the wise men asked. The wise men came and asked, where is the child who has been born the king of the Jews? So the question for each one of us, whether a card points us to it or something else, in the midst of our lives, where is Christ? Where is Christ in your life? How do you search diligently for Christ in each day? How do you seek Christ? all through the year. I hope that your epiphany word may be one of the things that guides you and seeks you in finding God, but if it is something else, good. Whatever leads us to God is good. Whatever guides us on the way, whether it's a star or a card or a friend or a conversation, we find that God is indeed in the midst of this world. Emmanuel, God is with us. Today I am, we will receive new epiphany cards for 2020. They are blue cards to help us not get confused. And the ushers will pass those baskets around during the last hymn. We do that as we seek to bear and follow God's word into the world. So as the baskets are passed, you are invited to take a card and see how God may use it in your year ahead. If you get a card that you hate, it's okay to take another one, but keep it. Maybe God will use it anyway. You never know. If you are streaming this service, you are welcome to come by the church office and pick an epiphany word up, or you can call the church office and we will send you one. But before we all take a new word, I, I want us to have some space to share. Because many of you had an epiphany word this year, and we need to have space to share how God used that in your life. So if you had an epiphany word, share that word and your experience. If your epiphany word this past year didn't connect to you, or you completely forgot it, just say so. 
Remember, we start with a prayer of confession. We're just honest. This is where we are. If you didn't have an epiphany word, or you did, but found another word or theme that God was using to guide you in 2019, share that. Just reflect on your year and where God was in the midst of it. Because we're here to share this journey together. So find one or two people around you and share your word. Or share how God guided you in this year. And if you're streaming, you can share with someone near you or find a journal and just journal your thoughts.